Welcome to the final newscast of the semester. I'm Ashley Iovino. And I'm Stephanie Rule. Happy Earth Day, everyone. And we would like to kick off the holiday with LAU Post Sustainability. At LAU Post, sustainability is about drawing upon our campus community's strengths and talents to promote a vision of healthy, beautiful, and just planet. Alexis Peters was, was able to get the inside scoop on what actions we are taking here at LAU Post. Sustainability is a nationwide movement, and here at LIU Post, the Go Green team promotes and creates different eco-friendly initiatives for the campus. How it kind of started was um, when the Southampton campus closed down um, from LIU, there was a group of students that um, finished out their careers, essentially, in college at the LIU Post campus. So there was a very, the Southampton College was historically very eco-friendly minded and always had sustainability on their minds. LIU Post Sustainability is not just an academic program, but it's kind of the catch-all for all of our sustainability initiatives. So from our recycling program to our transportation initiatives to our energy efficiency projects that we implement um, to our partnership with Aramark Dining Services and going green with them. Um, it pretty much covers the entire spectrum. Uh, I'm working on several projects. Uh, one of my main projects is the Green Office Program. The, we're trying to get all the offices on campus to sign up to be more environmentally friendly. For example, recycle and turn off the lights, turn off the computers. On our official green team, we have eight students that um, kind of run the entire program from the recycling end of it to the outreach and engagement. Um, but overall, we have about 35 to 40 people that are active on our sustainability committee, and that uh, encompasses students, faculty, and staff. Let's hear what students have to say about the new on-campus initiatives. It makes the campus even better because the water is even better, food is better, there's less trash, stuff like that. It's better to um, not have, like, the, um, call the... Containers they have in Winnick Express is not that sanitary than what you have with the green ones. Eco-friendly boxes at class at, uh, at Winnick are really helpful because most people use them like every single day. And I know I have mine and wash it out. And you can always bring it back and they'll wash it out for you if you're too lazy to do that. It's a good opportunity for the school to uh, save money and change the environment, which is always good. Um, I feel like it's a stepping stone to turn around the whole school and make the whole school eco-friendly with a lot of different things. As well as the recycling bins on campus, like I know I always try and hold on to my water bottle because I know like there's not one like more than five minutes away to just throw away my bottle instead of having it wind up in a landfill. For information on the sustainability program, you can visit room 116 in Hillwood Commons. The Pioneer's last issue of the semester hit stands today, and several changes to both staff and the layout are being made for the fall. Here's Rebecca Margolotti with the scoop. Pioneer is the on-campus LIU Post student newspaper. Editors-in-chief Alyssa Seidman and Maxime Deliaz have made various changes to the paper this year. We're changing the masthead because um, the faculty advisor brought it to our attention that facu other faculty were displeased with how it looked. I think it's really a good idea to have students, the design majors, um, make concepts for the logo and then having other students who read the paper vote on which one they think is best. It's great that they're letting students vote on which one they think is best. I guess you could say it really helps us get involved with the paper. We've changed the middle emblem to sort of um, make it relate a little bit more to the student body and you know, have a, like a relevant symbol of our school and like what our school spirit means to us and that is the Pioneer. Meetings are held every Monday during Common Hour in the newsroom located on the second floor of Hillwood Commons. All students are welcome to join the paper regardless of their major. 
think the Pioneer is great. You know, I pick it up every day. You know, I don't always pass by the built-in boards in the other buildings, and when I pick up the Pioneer, it keeps me up to date about what's going on on campus. I think that's really good. Um, because, like I said, you know, it's a lot of times when I'm just passing by, I'm not looking at anything when I pass by, so when I pick up the paper, at least I know that when I read it, you know, I can find out what's going on campus instead of actually trying to find it out from somebody else. At least I have something knowledgeable in my hands. They have a ton of the student events that are going on currently in the paper. So it really allows people to get to know what's going on on campus. If they're commuters or dormers, like they can know um, what events to attend. The Pioneer is very on top of all the campus events and they really do a very good job of being aware and being conscious of the things that happen on campus and those are things that the students would want to know about or would want to read about. We're friends with most of the people we work with. We are putting out a weekly paper for the student body to read, for the faculty to read, for the whole post community to look at and critique and talk about. Be sure to check out the new issue of The Pioneer every Wednesday during the spring and fall semesters or visit liupostpioneer.com. I'm Rebecca Martellotti for PTV News. The sports department at WCWP has reemerged in the past year. They cover every sport on campus, including football, baseball, and basketball. DeAndre Wilson tells us more about how the department was reboosted. With several members graduating, the WCWP sports department had to start again from the ground up. With new faces participating in the department, they were able to keep the program alive when it was at risk of a downfall. I got involved because I've always been a big sports fan, and uh, as soon as I found out that we were, we were reviving the sports department, I jumped right on board. Helping with the basketball games, and now I've moved on to baseball and anchored a few games. Um, it's fun. I mean, this place is a good training ground. Essentially, that's the way I see it. You know, you want to hone your skill, you, you can do it here pretty much. This past weekend was uh, my first time doing the color and play-by-play. -play. It, it was a lot of fun, especially because I'm a baseball junkie, as you probably can see. But um, it was just a lot of fun. It was just like looking at everything from a different perspective because I'm usually just, I'm so used to watching on like TV and, you know, just being like a fan, but actually being more involved and having a different perspective, it's just a lot more interesting and helps, it definitely is going to help for my career because I definitely want to do this professionally. With several members participating in basketball, football, and baseball, it was the first time in over a year the sports department was able to do those broadcasts. I was able to catch up with one of the sports directors to explain how they look to expand this the sports department in the future. Ago. Yeah, it was bad a couple of semesters ago when they all left. We weren't calling games for a whole year, so it's great that we're calling some baseball games, football games, basketball games. We have live shows every day, so it's de it's definitely getting there. It's networking with the fellow students, bringing more people in. Uh, we're at a good point right now. Uh, we're going to lose a couple of people, but as long as we keep getting a good strong turnover and, and uh, good training with the new people coming in, I, th I think we'll be uh, in good shape. The sports department is in full swing, and you can be a part of it, as they do basketball, football, and baseball. Just come stop by the WCWP radio station. I'm DeAndre Wilson, and this is PTV News. The LAU Promise ensures that students have the proper guidance and support to help them achieve their goals. Nicole Baratica has more on the new success coaches replacing advisors. LIU Post has found a new way to advise students featuring a brand new program called LIU Promise. Can you tell us about the new LIU Promise program? And they were really good. They not only helped me with my um, academic advisement, but they helped me with financial aid. Um, they really knew what they were talking about. They were really good. Um, they guided me all in the right direction, so I felt really good going into next semester. I know what I'm doing. Success coaches helped me find um, opportunity for student teaching, applying for graduation, and they just made it really helpful and gave me all the resources that I needed. Introducing success coaches to incoming students helped them find their right path in their college career. Has LIU Promise been a successful establishment added to LIU Post for students? I'd like to think so. Um, a lot of our students have really close relationships with us. I know my students like the back of my hand. Um, they're always in here. So, I mean, I think, you know, we try to help them as much as possible with everything, not just picking classes, but if they have financial questions, if they have study abroad questions, if they just want to hang out, you know, make a friend, then we're always there for them. So, I think everyone leaves here pretty happy. Uh, trying to help international students as their success coach. Uh, I'm helping over 100 students. Mostly they are coming from China, Korea, Japan, Scandinavian countries, and also uh, some uh, like Russia. 
as a freshman, I went to a success coach and they helped me um, find what I wanted to do and pointed me in the right direction. And now I'm a broadcasting major and they helped me find uh, internships and help me apply. And um, they're really helpful and they try and get you on the right track and in the right direction so you can graduate and be successful in your career and in your major. Make an appointment with the success coach. Visit LIU Promise Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. I'm Nicole Bradica. This is PTV News. With the semester coming to an end, students are feeling in over their heads. Here's Tom Frusamer with some stressed out students and some teachers with some friendly advice. College can be a stressful time, especially around finals week. We now go to talk to host students about what's stressing them out and how they're handling it. Believe it or not, as a senior, uh, I'm not too stressed right now. I really haven't taken a final exam in like a year. However, I do have projects and I usually just take it day by day and just, I don't know, just tell myself day by day to get through it. I would say I'm mildly stressed with college. Um, I think it's just because I'm a bit of a procrastinator, procrastinator. So I kind of push everything to the last minute and then I'm like in this mad dash to get everything done. But I handle the stress by, I don't handle stress, I don't know. I still trying to figure out how to handle the stress. What stresses me out? School and work. Um, it's actually really getting to me now, the fact that I have a full-time job and going to school full-time. Now that the semester's almost over, I'm doing schoolwork during my break at work. So it's really stressful. How do I cope with the stress? I kind of don't. Um, I take Advil a lot because I'm always having headaches and I think it's because I'm not sleeping much and I'm overworking my body. Finals can be very stressful, but surely there are some ways to alleviate that stress. I think they probably put a lot of pressure on themselves. Um, you know, once you have so many balls up in the air, it's, it's very easy to get hyper-focused on the importance of one grade or one project or, or, and lose sight of. Uh, it's really just a small step in the rest of your life, but when you're in this time, it's, it's really easy to get so bogged down in the minutia and the detail of, of all the things that you need to take care of. It's, it's no different than, you know, a, people out of college in their work life, you know, get so focused on that one little thing. So I think a lot of students at this time probably get really stressed because it's the end of the semester and they have a lot of work to get done, maybe a few papers, a test to prepare for. And I think procrastinating is probably one of the biggest issues and why people get stressed because they're waiting till the last week of classes to actually start working on projects or writing papers. One thing is time management, for sure. You kind of have to be on top of, of all your different classes and, and all your different projects. And, and being able to um, look ahead a little bit and plan, not so much what, where you're you know, we all procrastinate, but knowing what's uh, coming up and what's coming down the pike at least will allow you to mentally prepare for that. Once you're inside of it, um, making sure you get enough sleep. I think that a good way to cope with being stressed is maybe to take a moment and relax, maybe exercise, drink some water, do some yoga. I hear that's very good for stress. Internships are a vital part of any college experience. This summer, students of LAU will be skipping the beach and headed to the office. Here's Will Brunner with the story. As summer approaches, many are getting ready for fun in the sun, while students, however, may be getting ready for their summer internships to begin. We are here at LAU Post to see how students are getting ready for these summer internships and who's helping them. Well, I'm planning on working for the Catholic Free Press. It's um, a newspaper organization in uh, Worcester, Massachusetts. Um, I talk to the editor and I will be covering like high school and college athletes every every week over the summer and like what they're doing, what they're playing sports and stuff. So I'm looking to enhance my journalism skills on that. Well, I was looking at several internships, uh, basically trying to get experience in broadcasting. So a lot of radio stations, CBS, um, television stations, NBC, pretty much uh, all of the, you know, big networks you want to try and get in, start small you know, get, you know, network, do the simple things and uh, try to come out with something. Um, I'll be interning at CBS over the summer and I found out uh, um, about the internship through school. I know always downstairs by all the teachers' offices, they always have um, a list of internships and that's where I found it, so it's really helpful to have it there. Through the school's media arts department, uh, I applied to uh, ABC's Kelly and Michael and I got an interview through the school and I'm waiting to hear back, hopefully I get the internship. 
we took a trip over to the Winnick House, located on the Great Lawn of LIU Post, to find out how the Career Services Department helps students prepare for internships. LIU has a full service of, of career services uh, and counselors to help students out try to figure out what they'd like to do and also how the internship might help them out with their, uh, their academic development. So uh, right now we also have, we have the LIU Promise Program. There is a career counselor in there uh, to help students with the, the process of understanding where they'd like to go and how to find jobs. I also work with students uh, here on campus to help them find uh, both full-time and internship placements and help them with their resumes and, and the entire uh, job search process. So there are people here on campus to help. Heading back down the Great Lawn, we headed over to Humanities Hall to find out how the Media Arts Department helps out their students finding internships. You know, it really depends on the department. I think our department is exceptionally good at doing that, much more than most other departments. We have a lot of internships that we've had kind of on the books for years, and so students have, we have a, a backlog, and we have students who've had internships who now work in these places. So we have a lot of good connections, and we have uh, the information available for students right in the department, so they can come here and get the information they need, or they can ask other students too, which is a great resource. And um, we, we help them prepare their resume. We're happy to go over their resume with them and give them advice about what to say at, or not say at an interview. Well, we try to prepare our students for internships as best as possible in the classroom by trying to make them act professional, teaching them how things work, but that's only so much a classroom environment will take you. So students definitely need to get internships so they know what it's like to work in a professional field. So in terms of helping place students in internships, I think some of that relates directly to what I do in the classroom, which is try to teach skills and especially video production workflow in a way that actually would um, allow students to jump into a professional working environment, whether that's editing, news production, music video production. We've had students do all sorts of things. Um, in terms of placing students in internships, I think I do pass on internships I get through my own professional network um, from a lot of people who are well-placed looking for interns. Just last week, there was someone at Business Insider, which sounds kind of unsexy, but in fact, it's, it's a very sort of a highly trafficked website at this point that does a lot of video content. So that sort of um, internship that may not be on students' radar but is actually where a lot of video production is going, kind of post-broadcast, those sorts of uh, situations and settings I see as being really useful for students because they're, they're more about the future and how production is evolving. So I try to circulate those, flag those for students, and then I also try to um, advise students on what um, various sort of internship supervisors are looking for, how to compete with students from other institutions to actually get the internship. Internships can be one of the most beneficial assets to any student looking to acquire an entry-level job in any line of work. Thanks to their dedication and networking capabilities, some have been able to achieve this. For PTV News, I'm Will Brunner. Have you ever wondered what options you have as an international student after graduation? Join Danny Nataussen in finding out. There are many international students here at LEU Post. Many of them have dreamt of coming to the United States for studying. But what happens after graduation? A lot of times I tell my international students, especially if they do want to stay here after graduation, that they should be doing internships prior to graduation. So that way they can work and network and go to a company that will sponsor them. And once they get sponsored, then they can basically have permission to stay in the country for a year or extended period if the company wants to keep them as a sponsorship. International students, they have a lot of roadblocks, but within those roadblocks, they have a lot of opportunities. They just need to look at the right connections and look at the right people to connect with. Usually we will say, um, suggest them to do the OPT and that application usually they can start three months before they graduate and two months after their graduation date. OPT is only one year, 12 months, so they, uh, you can start from the application date you want to start and then it goes to uh, 365 days for the next year. OPT is they have to first of all graduate with all the credits and uh, earned and also GPA reached their graduation requirements and uh, uh, if they are not graduating even though they applied and it will become problem for them to really start OPT so the graduation requirements has to be met. So OPT is a kind of benefit coming along with F1 status 
once they graduated, actually, uh, technically F1 status should be uh, over. But uh, because this is a one-year benefit, so they can still stay here and work for that one year. But when you go home, come back at the border, there might be a little bit uh, um, shady part. But whether they will definitely come back or not, it's a little not really um, uh, for sure. No one will guarantee. So uh, in most cases, we don't recommend the students who applied for OPT to go home and come back. With the options limited and the requirements for OPT so strict, what do the international students plan to do? Currently, actually, I'm planning to um, stay in the higher education area. So if I can be a counselor at a university, it would be great. Or um, anything more similar related to do what I did for my grad assistantship, like um, campus life and international programming related area. So these are the few things that I'm working on right now. And um, yeah, these are pretty much the options. Well, I mean, I, I don't graduate until in one year, but hopefully by then I will have gained the, I want to see contacts and um, sufficient experience to get me, let, like land me a couple of projects and a couple of jobs. Um, so I might be able to stay here. I don't have to take a master's, um, but I don't know like in what yet. I want to work a little and then figure out what I want to specialize in. In a world that becomes smaller and smaller, there are still obstacles for international students who wants to stay in the U.S. Visit LAU Promise for more information. For PTV News, I'm Danny S. Hallisand. Did you know that there's a math lab at the bottom of Kell Hall? Students who struggle with math or physics can get help from professional tutors. Here's Michael Giordano with the story. The 2014-2015 school year is quickly coming to an end and finals are rapidly approaching. Math and physics majors face a demanding and challenging coursework and they may need extra help to fully understand the material. Luckily for them, the math and physics lab in Pell Hall provides all the extra help that they can get. We help students that come in whenever they need help with either math or physics and if they just have a small question or if they need like a topic they need help with, we help them. We tutor students in math and physics and help them with their homework and prepare for tests. The staff is graduate and undergraduate students who are majoring in math and physics and the professors handpick us because they feel like we're the best at helping others learn the discipline of math and physics. I'm a math major with a physics minor. I started out as the physics tutor but now I'm also a math tutor as well. Monday we're open from 9 to 5 and Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday from 9 to 7. Um, I feel like a lot of people don't know about it or most of the time they don't know where the room is in Pell. But we wish more students came. We will help everyone. We wish more students would come because it's a great service, but we do have around 150 students come a month. Even though many students don't take advantage of the free extra help provided, those that do have nothing but good things to say about it. They're really helpful. They answer all my questions, and if they need help, they help me if with extra time, and they're really nice. Oh, the math lab is really helpful. It's like my favorite place to go. Like whenever I have a hard time with any problems, just like there's so many people to help me. Like it's actually really good. Like it's helped me pass a lot of classes. They are very helpful. Um, if I have a problem, they're always there to help. They try use their memory to, and to try use their logic to try make or work things out. Olivia Laraca is my favorite tutor, hands down. She's like the nicest person ever. Um, physics and math in general are just very tough subjects that not a lot of people understand. So they definitely should. They're very helpful. They're, they're very understanding. Like They know that math's a hard subject and physics as well. So I think they should go if you're having trouble with that course. It's just common sense. Just, just go if you're not if you're struggling. So if you have any questions or just want to review your work before finals begin, head to Pell Hall room 271 and the math lab tutors will be willing to help you with anything that you need. Wow, I wish I knew that about the math lab when I was struggling with math one sophomore year. I know it's really great that they have tutors on campus. The Mozart Orchestra of New York is coming to the Tilla Center this Saturday. They'll be performing his last three symphonies. Here's Tiana Garraway with more. I'm outside the Tiller Center for Performing Arts, where the New York City Mozart Orchestra will be performing three symphonies here on the LIU Post campus. Uh, Mozart Orchestra is coming on Saturday, April 25th. The symphony will be conducted by American music director Gerard Swartz, who serves as the music director of the All-Star Orchestra, an ensemble of top musicians from America's leading orchestras. On Saturday night, we're, I'm conducting a concert of the three last symphonies of Mozart. 
It's with the Mozart Orchestra of New York. The three last symphonies are among the greatest pieces of classical symphonic music ever written by one of the greatest masters. I mean, here we have Mozart, who everyone loves, but his three greatest symphonies, 39, 40, and 41. A lot of them, a lot of people know it because it's the Jupiter, is the last one, the G minor, and, and it, it, they're, just, they're just great masterpieces of this repertoire played by a phenomenal orchestra. So it should be a very exciting concert. Let's hear from students to see what they have to say about the Mozart Orchestra coming to the Tiller Center. The composer that they're playing music from, he's written music for my instrument, which is clarinet, that I played for a couple of years. So to see him, to see them play outside of my instrument is also a good experience. I think it's good for the community. It's good for the campus. It's good for you know the people. We have a lot of people on this campus who are interested in classical music and who are very involved in the music departments. And I think it's a good opportunity for them to go see, you know, a um, a real good orchestra. I think it's a great idea because I'm a lover of classical music. I listen to 105.9 WQXR, I believe, and uh, I think it's a, a very, very interesting idea. I'm really excited. I've heard about them all the time, and um, the music that they're playing, I've played before, so to hear them play it will be a good experience for me. The tickets for the public range from 43 to 83 dollars. But students can actually get them for either free by showing up at the box office two hours before the performance and showing their ID, or if they want to get them in advance and guarantee their seat, it's $15 for LIU students with their ID. So don't forget, April 25th at 8 p.m. to come down to the Tiller Center to see the New York Orchestra perform a night of classical music. For PTV News, I'm Sienna Garraway. Finally, the students at PTV have created a new show called The Station a mock documentary series similar to The Office. Filming started at the beginning of the semester. Here's Tom Finn with more information about their new project. I'm Tom Finn and I'm standing outside PTV where they shoot LIU Post's newest show, The Station, a show completely written and directed by students. The Station is it's kind of a parody of like The Office and it takes a lot of uh, inspiration from that. But instead of obviously being about them, it's about just the antics that go around every day here in PTV. Maybe for a year and a half, the Toms and I have been saying we need to do an improv show. It was kind of more their idea, and I was like, yeah, we totally have to do it. Something like Whose Line Is It Anyway? Um, but it, it, never, it never worked out. You know, we never went through with it. And uh, at the beginning of this one, uh, Tom Finn decided to uh, do a a TV series that was like a mockumentary like The Office, but, you know, with uh, us at the PTV station. Which brings us to our next segment, aiming. Oh my oh god, god. Will! All right, so when you're aiming, you want to make sure you have both eyes wide open and you're looking at your target head on. You don't want to hold it like a wimp. The characters on the show are meant to be comedic exaggerations of the actors who play them. I feel like I am playing essentially myself because I do fight a lot with the character um, Kyle, which is played by Tom Prusamer. I'm a lot like my character, I would say, because obviously I get a lot of flack for my name. Although the one part that I would say is not really true is like nobody really hates me, like G in, in that one scene. Like. So All right, settle down. Hello. Let's take attendance. Mike Abrams. Present. Alex Bader. Here. Courtney Cox. Well, this is one of the very first times that PTV's really had a scripted show being shot and produced. So this is the first time we've had seven episodes of a scripted show. I think the station works because it's real. It's based on a real situation, and everything that comes out of it is very true to life in terms of the frustrations that a station manager would have in putting out a quality product. You can see each episode of the station at youtube.com slash twptv. For PTV News, I'm Tom Finn. That's all we have for the final PTV newscast. I'm Stephanie Rule. And I'm Ashley Iovino. See you in the fall.